Hello and welcome to Prime Business with me, Emma Davis. President Kufuado has expressed optimism that the Ghanaian economy is rebounding despite the shocks experienced in his administration. According to him, inflation, which is the major driver, is gradually declining, thus projecting a positive economic outlook. He is therefore convinced of hitting a single-digit inflation target before his tenure in office ends in 2024. Samuel Imbura has more. We'll bring you that in our subsequent bulletins. Meanwhile, the producer price inflation, which measures the rate of changes in prices at the production level for the month of September 2023, fell by 3.1% to 25.1%. According to figures from the Ghana Statistical Service, the producer price inflation in the industry sector decreased to 26.6% in September 2023, from 30.4% in August 2023. In the manufacturing sector, the PPI was estimated at 16%. In the services sector, the rate increased from 15.5% in August 2023 to 16.1% in September 2023. Tax consultant Francis Simoboy has reiterated calls to the Ghana Revenue Authority to engage players in the informal sector on tax collection. Spare parts dealers at Obosu Kai in the Greater Accra region say they will close down their shops on November 1st to protest actions by GRE. But Mr. Timoboy believes collaboration with the relevant associations will end this impasse. Is that discussion that there's intimidation in the tax system. It doesn't send a good signal to those who want to invest in, in, in this country. So I believe that we should have done some engagement either through education, making the taxpayers understand that this is a compliance tool that the GRA is embarking. But for some reason, we, we couldn't get to this level and we are told that they want to embark on demonstration by closing their shops down. Hmm. I think there's a room for us to do that engagement so that we can avert this uh, closure of business, which will affect both government and then the, the taxpayer, uh, I mean, the businesses as well. So I think that between now and November, what the leadership of both uh, group, the, I mean, the tax authorities and then the, the traders association should do is to come together and understand if there's a way that the GRA can still ensure compliance without being in their offices, so be it. Globally, voluntary tax compliance is the best. But you see, in, in an informal environment like this, sometimes there are some people who simply say they will not comply, especially if they don't feel that their taxes are being used to, to the level that they want. So GRA needs to really break the issues down and see how the issue can be resolved. Mm. Demonstration will not change the law. I mean, mm. the law cannot be changed overnight if they close their shops down. In a bid to take full advantage of the automotive industry, government says it is in the process of developing an automotive component manufacturing development policy. This, it believes, will attract investments from component manufacturers to feed into the local automotive industry. Speaking at the launch of the first ever assembly plant of Ashok Leyland Phoenix Trucks, Deputy Minister of Trade and Industry Michael Ochebrefi stated that the policy will enhance the availability of certified parts and drive the export of made in Ghana vehicles under after. To accelerate and break into the top 10 global commercial vehicle market, Ashok Leyland has expanded its presence into a resilient light commercial vehicle with a new generation Phoenix platform. To this end, the company has assembled its made in Ashok Leyland Phoenix trucks here in Ghana at Rana Motors assembling plant. Speaking to Joy Business at the launch of the new trucks, 
Deputy Minister of Trade and Industry, Michael Otribe, he stated that the coming on board of Ashok Leyland Phoenix Trucks into Ghana's automotive industry will complement government's effort of developing an automotive component manufacturing development policy. These companies are doing so, including even uh, Rana Motors, are, are, are working hard as far as the, the policy is concerned, working hard to be able to uh, champion the cause of, of government in the area of automobile development. We are sure that within the shortest possible time, Ghana will become the automotive development hub in Stop region. You know Ghana already as a gateway to West Africa. And also with the coming into force of the African Continental Free Trade area, it also gives us a different leverage, be able to enter the markets in the sub-region easily. So these assemblies can use Ghana as a hub, I mean a manufacturing point, to springboard into the other West African countries. On his part, Head of International Operations at Ashok Leyland, Rajash R, said the assembling of Ashok Leyland Phoenix trucks in Ghana will afford their business partners a seamless transportation experience. Ashok Leyland has always been in the forefront of creating technologies for the world and we actually want to partner with more and more companies across the globe today. And we already have manufacturing facilities spread across in Asia, the Middle East and Africa. And this is, we want to proudly present across this assembly plant in Ghana right now. And we are assembling the, the made in uh, Ghana, the proudly assembled Phoenix products across here. This is the ninth assembly plant for Ashok Leyland across the globe today. Chief Operating Officer of Rana Motors, Kasem Odimat, explains to Joy Business what sets Ashok Leyland Phoenix apart from other trucks. It has a very uh, good engine that uh, uh, that it's a 1,500cc turbocharged diesel engine that has a very good fuel efficient. Uh, it's a very good uh, fuel efficient engine. Also, it has a 80 horsepower, it, uh, so it's a strong engine. At the same time, it can carry goods up to two tons with this size. Uh, so. For us, we believe that it's a good uh, model that can serve uh, the Ghanaian uh, community and the Ghanaian uh, uh, business community. The Ashok Leyland Phoenix Trucks comes with a class-leading five-year or 500,000 kilometers warranty and a score in the trust in its quality. Let's talk insurance now as the Insurance Brokers Association of Ghana has urged the public to engage insurance brokerage firms to help eliminate issues associated with late payment of claims. Speaking at the launch of the Insurance Brokers Awareness Month, President of the Association, Shaibu Ali, said engaging brokers could help erase negative perceptions about difficulties in paying claims. Here's more. Insurance broking remains an unfamiliar term to the average Ghanaian. With insurance penetration at a lower level in the country, a lot of education is needed. In view of this, the Insurance Brokers Association of Ghana, IBAC, has launched a month-long campaign to educate the public on the importance of insurance brokerage. Speaking to Joy Business at the launch, the president of the group, Shaibu Ali, stressed the importance of insurance brokerage on eliminating bottlenecks associated with insurance processes. So the education is just to enlighten the public about insurance broking. Make sure that your use of insurance services is seamless, is problem free and most importantly when you have a claim you don't have issues because the difficulties about insurance hinges on claims in this country. If you go on Radio Rana, everybody is talking about a claim that was that happened and it wasn't paid, it was paid but it wasn't fully paid. If you have a broker to walk you through the process, you will see that these problems will be minimized. This is what he had to say on the need for businesses to engage insurance brokers. We are letting people know about insurance and we are letting people know about broking because there are a lot of benefits to using a broker. You can go to an insurance company to buy a policy. You don't have a technical eye. You don't understand insurance. You won't even know the policy they are selling to you. Is it the correct policy? Are you paying the right price? Is it the correct company you are paying from? And the problems come when there's a claim. When there's a claim, that's where you start to see the real issue. 
issues. That's where you go to a policy document and you realize, I should have done this, I should have done that, I should have done that, which I didn't do. So we are seeking to let people know that, look, if you want to concentrate on your core activity and leave your insurances, the best thing to do is get an insurance broker, hand over all your insurance needs to him. He would look at you, do an assessment of what you do and come up with your insurance needs. The acting commissioner of the National Insurance Commission, Michael Kofi Andor, called for the use of technology to increase reach and capture the youthful economy. The National Insurance Commission, we are trying to draw up a regulatory framework around the tech platforms so that we can mitigate the risks that come from selling insurance on the tech platforms. Uh, the insurance companies are investing in these technologies to enable them to, to sell insurance and that is why I was admonishing the brokers to also begin to, because we want to promote their services. and. Majority of Ghanaians are young people who are pro-tech, and so it is important that they begin to deploy technology in, 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 in offering their services. The Awareness Month will focus on enlightening consumers on claims processes. The month will also be marked by media engagement as well as various activities across the country. Sophia of Adidome, Tobi Kosinyi Kakaklolo Ajuman V, is pushing for the establishment of an effective disaster fund that will help deal with major crises in the country. He says a fund like that can help alleviate the suffering of affected people. The chief was speaking to the press after the Tanka Owners Union of Ghana donated relief items worth 500,000 CDs to the affected residents. There's more in this report. The flooding of various communities in the Volta region has stoked a debate on the preparedness of the country to handle disasters of that magnitude. Thousands of people have been dislodged from their homes, exposing them to many dangers. With NADMO, the country's disaster management organization, struggling to contain the situation, Tobe Kosinyi Kakaklolo Ajiman V, the Dufia of Adidome, says at this time the nation considers establishing a workable disaster fund. I know that we've been talking about disaster funds here and there, but I think that this, what has happened now, should tell us something that as a nation, as a country, we need to have a proper disaster management fund. So I'd like to appeal to the government. I know the, uh, the NADMO is quite stretched. Here, again, maybe corporate Ghana would also have to come in. Individuals will need to come in so that we all support. According to him, such a fund can help in dealing with the aftermath of such a disaster. So that such funds, when such things happen, imagine that the water recedes and then goes. What becomes of those who have lost their farms, those who have lost their homes, some homes are broken down. Such funds could be, I mean, could, could, could be tapped into and given to people, who, those who have lost their capital, their money, they could give them certain capitals that can get them back on their feet. The Tanka Owners Union of Ghana, responding to pleas for help, has donated 500,000 cities worth of relief items to the affected resident, Ignacio Skokudo, is executive secretary of the union. It's our hope and aspiration that uh, we have been able to alleviate part of their suffering. Because in the midst of all this, in fact, there will be hunger, there will be no food. People don't have any access to food now. People don't have any access to anything. So we believe that this is a small token that the tanker owners will as well as our drivers who are supportive of our job to present to our uh, brothers and sisters, mothers, sisters, kids and elders of uh, North Town, Central Town and South Town. Tobi Kaka Klolo Ajiman the Faith and one other resident expressed their gratitude to the Tanka Owners Union for their kind gesture. I must say, in fact, I am really, really surprised when I saw that number of items that are being offloaded. Um, it is a very great gesture from them. I uh, would like to say a big thank you to the Tanker Owners Union, together with their drivers, the, the union, uh, that's, that's their drivers. Union. We tell the Tanker Owners Union that 
God, uh, we thank them for what they did to us. They hear us. They hear our crying. Then they came here to give us this plain thing. We say God richly bless them. Benevolent individuals and organizations are still being called upon to help the affected resident cope with the situation. For Joy News, I am Samuel Kujabrais. Now more airlines have expressed interest in operating in Ghana. This is according to the Deputy Director General at the Ghana Civil Aviation Authority, Daniel Aqua. According to him, the country's quest to become an aviation hub has attracted more international and regional flights as they consider Ghana's regime as favoring their business operations. He spoke to Joy Business when Nigerians Ibom Air commenced regional flights from Lagos to Accra. It's not Ghana dipping. Um, Ghana used to be the highest. We've been the reigning champion for about three to four years since 2019, April. That is having an effective implementation of the International Civil Aviation Organization's um, standards and recommended practices. Ghana was at 89.89% and just recently, a couple of weeks back, South Africa went through the audits and had about 92%. So Ghana hasn't actually dipped, just that another country's effective implementation has um, increased. But Ghana is still working hard towards that and we are expecting another audit most probably in 2025. And we believe we are going to go higher than that. Yeah, for the flights, we have airlines still locking at our doors. But as to when they are ready will be the question. Uh, I can't really tell the number of airlines for now. And even internally, we have also others knocking on our doors to establish new airlines internally. Let's talk agriculture as the Food and Agriculture Organization is making a strong case for Ghana to reassess its national food buffer stock company. According to the FAO, this is necessary to address the challenges affecting Ghana's food security. Senior Water Development and Management Officer of FAO, Inzimani Valer, says this can be done through effective and efficient promotion of technologies and innovation. There's more in this report. The World Food Day focuses on different aspects of food security and agriculture, including fishing communities, climate change, and biodiversity. This year's event was to raise awareness about the importance of equal access to food and water for everyone on the planet. Prioritize water in policy and planning. You see, everyone is saying water is important. When you talk about water, everyone, no one will deny, you know. But you see in the policy and what they are doing, is it water a priority? And you see in the financing what they are doing, is it water a priority? So government and institutions should really take water as a priority and put it in action. Uh, know your water. This is very important for institutions. Government need to invest in water tenure as assessment to ensure all people are able to as access water and that they have legal security in doing so. The Food and Agriculture Organization representative to Ghana and Deputy Representative for Africa, Dr. Yedi Yasmi, called for a more robust policies to support the agricultural value chain. It's time to repurpose our investment to agriculture to ensure that we can make sure that Ghana is having uh, a you know, world's food secure future. So it is very important to, you know, for Ghana to reflect on this and FAO is ready to, to work alongside with the government to make sure that you know, our agri-food system is resilient, is ready for future shocks and we are ready to support also science and innovation. This year's World Food Day was under the theme, Water is Life, Water is Food, Leave No One Behind.
Some civil society organizations and stakeholders in fishery sector are calling for policies that will protect women in farming from engaging dubious real estate agents. Recent reports have shown that some women in the agri sector have been lured to, re to release their farmlands to real estate agents without proper documentation. Speaking to Joy Business Center Manager for the DAA Fisheries Training Center, Emilia Norte, cautioned local authorities to desist from such acts. Yes, more. The civil society group said the action by these real estate players could cause a threat to Ghana's food security. Emilia Norte called on government to support these farmers. With our farmers, the challenge that our farmers are having now is the real estate developing and building of houses on farmlands. That is a big challenge for our farmers. They are complaining. All their farmlands are being sold for housing projects and they are having lesser and lesser acreages to crop. So that has also been posed a challenge. Apart from the, the, the climate change also that is affecting them, the fact that the chiefs and the owners of the land are selling the, house, the land to real estate developers is also a challenge to them. What can be done if, if, if the government will come in and then de declare that this area is only for farming and not for housing projects, it will be well. But if the government leaves the thing to, you know, in Ghana, the government doesn't own land. That is our problem. Director in charge of finance and administration at the Ministry of Fisheries and Aquaculture Development, Rosemary Abe, pledged their outfit commitment in addressing the challenges faced by these farmers. It also highlights the challenges and opportunities that rural women face in the context of the current global crisis that threaten their livelihood and well-being. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, for the fisheries and aquaculture sector, the Food and Agriculture Organization State of the World's Fisheries and Aquaculture Report of 2022 estimated that women account for 28% of the workforce in aquaculture, 18% in fisheries, and 50% across the pre- and post-service sections of the value chain. In Ghana, Women's participation in the fisheries and aquaculture is estimated to be at 40%. The role of women is important in fisheries and aquaculture because they add value to fresh fish through processing, marketing and distribution. The event was under the theme, Rural Women Cultivating Good for All. The Ghana Netherlands Business and Culture Council organized a 10-day horticulture business challenge to empower tertiary students and, position, and potential entrepreneurs in the field of agriculture. According to the general manager of the council, the project is aimed at bridging the skills gap in Ghana and also provide valuable graduates for companies in Ghana. This challenge presents an opportunity for tertiary students to provide business solutions to real problems faced by Dutch Ghanaian companies. It also provides the students with the opportunity to acquire practical skills in the field of horticulture. In an interview, General Manager of the Ghana Netherlands Business and Culture Council, Jalen Wiyada, retreated his outfit commitment towards bridging the gap between theoretical and practical agricultural studies. Research has seen in Ghana that there is uh, when you interview companies that there's a skill gap so companies are uh, wanting to have certain skills and they are missing that in the students who come from a university or school it's um, you know Nestle is a big multinational company here in Ghana and they have started a training uh, for the employees the new employees who are going to start to work to them but they test them first so they had like 10 people and they got, got like a training short training program and only from the 10 they, they took in three but the other seven are good because they did a training program and then we saw that uh, other companies saw that they did that training program and they said oh you've done that Nestle training program we, 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 we want you uh, in so we, we, we're trying to do the same thing with all these kind of programs to basically assist the students to be more valuable for companies and that, uh, that, is, that we basically work against that skill gap Project manager at the Ghana Netherlands Business Culture Council, Tracy Mainz, explains the project and its intended impact. So it's a 
10-day program and then the aim is that after participants have gone through this program, they'll gain practical skills that would augment their theoretical studies in school. So participants would gain access to coaches, participants would gain access to entrepreneurs, very well-established entrepreneurs in the field. They would also go through practical sessions in agriculture, in horticulture, to get their hands dirty in the ground, see how things are done on the ground. That's how we draw the curtain tonight on Prime Business. My name is Emma Davis. For more business news, log on to myjoyonline.com. Have a good evening.